microphone right there. Wow, they're already lining up, this is awesome. Uh, so in order to get through all the questions, we do have a couple rules. First off, no requests, no can we take a selfie on stage. Can you say uh, a particular line as a particular character? Can you sing happy birthday to my BFF? I'm sorry. Next year, make sure your BFF is right here and, uh, and we'll be able to get to it. The second, because there already is a line, everybody has questions. I have questions, you guys have questions. So let's keep our two, three, four, eight part questions to a minimum so that way we can get through all of them. If you have more than one question, feel free to get back in line and we'll try to get to it as fast as possible. And rule number three, how many of you guys have been in here with a room, uh, in a room with me before? All right, so what is rule number three? Have fun. So you guys ready to practice rule number three? Yeah. No further ado, let's bring out our guest. Please help me welcome first, Eric Stewart. <laughs> and I don't know if you uh, know this next uh, character, maybe. Anybody familiar with uh, Yugi Mudo? Yeah, thank you for- Have you been working out? <laughs> yes, actually. I don't know. Yeah, thank you for coming out on a Sunday. Yeah, very happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. You guys have been here all four days, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. But it's only four, I thought it was seven. Certainly <laughs> feels like it. How have these fine folks of Raleigh been treating you so far? So awesome, you guys. I mean, obviously, you know, you expect to say, Oh, it was really great and everybody was... But you guys are great. It has been wonderful. So I, I've made this comment throughout the weekend, like how difficult it is for me to be showered with praise hour after hour. <laughs> it's been awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It, it, anytime we hear, you're the voice of our childhood. I grew up watching your shows. Um, uh, it doesn't get lost on us. It's very, very flattering, very humbling. Thank you for that. And he only minds that I get more of that a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, uh, being, being here, like you said, with fans and, and with friends. Now, in yeah. the studio, yeah. you go in there and you, you don't usually get to right. record with, 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 with us. Right, right. right. So, what is it like coming to the shows and, and seeing your friends who you haven't, who you really, you know, don't get a chance to see? Well, what, what you say is absolutely right, but two amendments to that understanding. So one, Four Kids was really good about having parties so everybody could mix, not just the cast members, but the engineers, and the writers, the producers, and those were some of the best times we'll never remember. Um, but, uh, but another thing specific to my relationship with Eric is that Eric, as well as being the wonderful Kaiba in Yu-Gi-Oh, he directed the first two seasons of that, yes! A lot of applause. And as an actor, you always get something from the people you work with, and when you work with great directors like Eric, you always get pearls of wisdom and wonderful things that you take with you. And I think probably the most helpful thing that Eric said to me, more, more than one occasion, is, okay, Dan, next time with talent. Yes. <laughs> Still working on that. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's the special thing about um, uh, having a relationship like this with Dan is that uh, um, we became friends through work. Yeah. Um, you know, basically he would come in and do the work, and I'm directing him, and for you know ten years of whatever that was, <laughs> yeah. we spent a lot of time together, and you know, and we have developed a friend. I mean, I consider him one of my best friends. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Also, during that time, like, online gaming was becoming a thing, so we would have, like, nights with other cast members playing Halo and, uh, and yeah, many, that's many right. other yeah. first-person shooters. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. What were your first impressions of the project when you, when you heard about it, you know, through the, 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 the manga and manga? Yeah, yeah. yeah. First, first impressions of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! specifically? Yes. Or, oh, okay. Yes, of, 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 yes, of, of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Of Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, Yu -Oh? and, and, um, you know and, and hearing about the project and... Right you know, auditioning and being cast. Sure. Did you want to talk about that first? Or? Um, I'll do my short uh, answer. I'm a little fried from, from talking all weekend long, so um, uh, I, I, I know it seems weird that Kaiba is going to let Yugi take a <laughs> lead. Uh, um, but I was brought in to Four Kids to direct Yu-Gi-Oh! and they had already cast everyone in the show except for Kaiba. And when I walked in and I saw the first episode, I actually said to the producer, Oh, this is Pokemon 90210. <laughs> um, and and I, I felt that that was going to be a, su a success for, the, for the, the ones that grew up watching Pokemon, and of course they're on a slightly more mature 
uh, storyline. Um, but uh, I loved the animation, and it was darker. Uh, I'm a big fan of like the Batman stuff, and um, so Yu-Gi-Oh! Yugi, was just a darker, cool anime that still was going to go on Saturday mornings. Yeah. That was kind of neat. Yeah. We grew up with Saturday morning cartoons, different ones. Yeah. But, uh, so that, yeah, that Yu-Gi-Oh! was part of the last of the Saturday morning cartoons is, is an interesting uh, place to have. But yeah, so yeah, when, if, you're, if you've been familiar with, with Pokemon and you see Yu-Gi-Oh!, you think this is edgier, this is darker, obviously there are a lot of similarities. Uh, but another thing that I really responded to that, was that I was already a fan of Egyptology, ancient Egypt. You're right. I, 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 <laughs> ancient Egypt, yes. Woo! Ancient Egypt to come to one of these conventions. Um, so, uh, but I, I got into that by way of Raiders of the Lost Ark, a small film you might have heard of. Um, and uh, anyway, so it was cool for me to uh, to be, have that as some extra creative juice to work with. So yeah. yeah. So uh, these past couple of years have been, you know rough on the entertainment business, uh, to say the least. Uh, a lot of working from home and stuff like that. So uh, what have you been working on, on recently? What, you know, you any, any projects? Yeah, yeah, I'm so glad you asked. So um, I, we mentioned it to a few people who have come by our tables, but Eric and I are releasing a podcast next month called The Heart of the Cards. If you go on YouTube and you search a drama not production, so that's drama with AU in front of it and DA behind it, so ah drama duh productions. It'll take you right to the uh, our YouTube channel, and we're going to start releasing half hour episodes once a week, beginning next month. And our log line for it is that it's a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt with. It's just another way of saying we all have things we want to do, and we all have things that get in the way. Right? So it's a conversation that anybody can relate to. The initial conversations. Has anybody here heard of The Hero's Journey? Joseph Campbell, right? Hold your hand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So any movie that you watch, this is Star Wars, this is Raiders, this is anything nowadays. This is Demon Slayer. This is a whole bunch. This is even Alice in Wonderland. You have a protagonist that goes through a journey. They're transformed by that, and they bring the value of that transformation back. Well, Joseph Campbell was a scholar who identified all of this and all of the mythology. We're not teaching a course on Joseph Campbell. We're just using the hero's journey as a starting point for our conversations. And anybody can relate to a hero's journey because in our own lives, we're all our own protagonist. <laughs> sometimes we're also our own antagonist. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> More times than I'd like to admit. So yes, uh, the heart of the cards coming next month on YouTube. That's, that's project that's one. That's project one. The project two started Back in 2017, oh, it seems so long ago, yep. but I wrote and directed a show called Crossing the Gods. And thank you. And, and, uh, and originally we thought we were gonna re release like five minute episodes. We describe it as an audio, an illustrated audio drama. Have you seen an animatic or a motion comic? You understand what that means. You get imagery, it's not full on animation, it's not intended to be. Um, so anyway, it's all recorded. The cast is myself, Eric, uh, Veronica Taylor, Erica Schroeder, Greg Abbey, Mark Thompson, uh, Wayne Grayson. I mean, everybody that you already know and love, performing in a way that you've never heard them before. Much more real life, much more nitty gritty. And uh, it's a superhero genre, but it's not about big beams shooting down, you know, a city or, or, or galaxies colliding. It's really much more about the drama within, as Eric likes to say, you have to save yourself before you can save anybody else, right? So it's a, it's a mature theme, not, not to say that it's you know, uh, about sex or using vulgarity, but it's a, it's a more mature take on that uh, milieu, if you will. So Crossing the Gods, originally was gonna come out a couple or a few years ago, but I'm drawing it, I'm creating all of the visuals for it, and that takes a lot of time. Yes. And yeah. then there was this thing I don't know if you've heard of called COVID. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For the past couple we don't years, talk about COVID. Some of you may know I'm a single father, and so my energies have obviously been uh, devoted to my children and getting us as a family through these more than these challenging times. Yes. So, but it's but we're back in production. It's definitely coming. The story is recorded. I can't wait to share it with y'all. Uh, but it's just going to take a little bit longer. But the heart of the cards starts happening next month. Yep. All right, hello. You both are recording, oh. so I'm not going to. Um, 
actually get this flying at all. Oh, that's not your fault. Ideas. That's not your fault. No. If you say the question, I'll repeat it so people can hear. Okay. Uh, with the success of Detective Pikachu, would you guys be open to doing a cameo if they did a live-action movie? Oh, no. Would we cameo in a live-action movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. if they need like a hobo Santa Claus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Right, right. That's right. There you go. Oh, Matty Glowski. Yeah, yeah. But totally. Yeah, yeah. Good question. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Hello. Hey. 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 Huge fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. Huge fan. Huge fan. Which are our favorite characters apart from our own in Duelist Kingdom? I actually love Pegasus. So much so I copied his hairstyle. <laughs> I don't think I can pick another character besides Kaiba. So I, Kaiba. So Kaiba. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can do that at the Mokubo. What about Mokubo? No! We can find Mokuba. I don't have I keep, I keep kidnapping Mokuba and I have no idea where he is. Okay, so uh, you, you, you can be Kaiba and his ego. There it is. There you go. Good yeah. question. Thank you. Hello. What's your name? Um, my question is, uh, you guys have been doing this for years now. And yeah. When you first started, did you ever think that Kazuki Takahashi's creation would be... Yeah this widespread when it comes to the fan base for like Yu-Gi-Oh players and just uh, anime watchers. Do you ever think that it'd be this big? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, many of the shows that we have auditioned for, the producer or the casting director will say during that casting session, this is gonna be the biggest show ever. We hear that all the time. Um, you know, with Pokemon, it was, oh, wow, this is kind of fun. And then it turned into the, you know, the, the big, big show that it was. Okay, so that can happen, right? Um, Yu-Gi-Oh, I, I want to say that I'm not surprised. I didn't think, oh, this is going to be like a number one show. I didn't think it was going to reach worldwide like it does. Um, but it's not a surprise. So maybe in hindsight, it's like, of course. Uh, I mean, there are there are ca characters in the show that everyone can relate to, even the rival, right? Um, some there's something redeemable about everyone. It's not rocket science. It's it's actually very smart and very simple to to create that kind of team, um, and it makes sense. You connect to you might like the funny character, you might like the the evil character, whatever it is. There's something redeemable about. It. So I wasn't completely surprised. Yeah, I was uh, buying comic books in a comic shop, which I'm known to do, and, uh, and I was chit-chatting with the guy behind the counter, and I mentioned, oh yeah, I just uh, got this show, Yu-Gi-Oh, and it's kind of like Pokemon. And he said, uh, well, you know, I mean, Pokemon's one thing, you can't expect lightning to strike twice. Well, maybe not, but we struck right next to it, so that's pretty good. Uh, but, uh, but perhaps more, more relevantly, uh, I don't think that Kazuki Takahashi himself could have imagined when he was sweating over those boards, the pages that you draw on, right, when you're creating comic art, I don't think he could have imagined the impact of what he was going to do would spread so far, would resonate so deep, would affect so many so much. So that should be a lesson to us all. You never know what's going to happen if you put yourself out there and follow what you believe. Mm -hmm. Good question. Awesome. Good Hello, what's your name? Hello, uh, I think I might be the first one to say my name, but my name is Bryn. Hi. Hi. Hello. So this is in regards to the creator, Kazuka Takahashi, Hi. and knowing that you got to meet the creator of the show and see the legacy that it created and his unfortunate passing, I know it left a huge hole in a lot of us. So knowing that you were a part of this legacy, like how does it make you feel knowing that you got to meet the creator and see his creation grow in such a massive way? Privileged. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw one of the posts that I put up right when it happened with Dan and I and, uh, and Sensei posing for a picture together, um, showing his uh, fun personality. Um, 
Yeah, it's like uh, the the, mo the moment I it was like three o'clock in the morning when I woke up, and I I don't know I I happened to be actually wearing this same shirt. Oh my Aww. gosh! I was wearing that shirt to go to sleep in, and um, which this says Yu-Gi-Oh by the way. Um, and I woke up in the in the middle of the night, and uh, as one does, I checked my phone <laughs> to see what time it was, and on the newsfeed that popped up, and uh, I didn't want to wake him up. Uh, but I, but I, I I wanted to forward this information to him. But it was it was interesting for me personally. I I didn't realize how much of a father figure I considered him in terms of creating these characters. Kaiba is, you know, I've been playing Kaiba for twenty years, right? Ka playing this role has changed who I am, and it came from his mind. Um, to have the chance to have performed the live duels in front of him. He loved that. He thought that was great. Um, you know, that, think about if you're a creator, right? And you, you're writing a story, and all of a sudden that story comes off the page, and two actors are acting out your characters in front of you. It's even beyond the cartoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Way, way beyond the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. no, it was, it was, uh, it was hard to, it, it definitely hit hard. Um, but I, I feel very honored that we got a chance to spend a little time with him, as brief as it was, to get to meet him and to see what his other personality was besides this, you know, whole, whole, held up to this high, high level. He's also a fan of the stuff. Yeah, and, and for myself, I would say um, that this show, the participation with this franchise and the card game, we hear so many stories about how it's affected people's lives way beyond as a piece of entertainment. A young gentleman we met in London, and just, uh, he introduced himself to me and, and said, I'm on the spectrum, the way that expressed in his uh, individual case was he had a, a speech impediment, speech difficulties, and he went on to tell us that he's now a speech therapist helping others. Aww. Yeah. 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 And, and one other thing about how this affects your broader life. So I met Wayne Grayson from doing Yu-Gi-Oh. I went to Wayne Grayson's birthday party and met the woman who would become my wife. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have the children that I have today. Wow. If it weren't for that. Wow, that's right. So there you go. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, so good question. Beautiful. Oh, what's your name? Hi. I'm Donovan. Um, hey, Donovan. Cool. Hey. Um, it's a little simple, but what, what are your favorite things about the characters you voice? What do you love most about them? I go. I go. I love that I get to do two characters. <laughs> and, and, and that they inform each other, that they bounce off of each other, is an actor's dream. You know, and seeing how they progress and how they change, feed, and help each other grow uh, is, a, is a real privilege. So I love that dynamic. Uh, for me, um, there, are, there are different challenges as an actor for roles. And Kaiba is a challenge because I walk that line of being a rival and not a villain. And the sarcasm and the, and the pompous stuff is really just a shell a protective armor because underneath that his first priority is taking care of his family and when the, the chips are down who's the first person he sides with to fight a common enemy but Yugi so he's not a bad guy and so I love being able to needle him and, and give all the all the cast members a hard time because I mean it's, it's very close to me you know I'm I, I'm soft in the middle obviously you can tell <laughs> I'm soft in the middle, but um, I put up that facade a lot to make sure that you understand. You can't. You, I'm not vulnerable, and I think that that's what Kaiba does too. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Donovan. Yeah, okay, good question. <laughs> well, what's your name? My name's Spencer. Hey, Hello, Spencer. Spencer. So, what was one of the most memorable times you had in the recording booth? Because I know everybody's been talking about the show and this and that, but <laughs> that's only the fit in line. You got to start with the recording, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I, for me, um, <clears throat> uh, I think one of the most memorable things was when, uh, when Exodia was assembled. And that was when I got my first understanding, my first taste of how big, broad, what the grandeur, what the scope of what was going on was, right? Because at first glance, it's like, they're playing cards and it matters? <laughs> and, 
and, and, and also there's a challenge to dramatizing um, the elocution of card game rules. You know, it's sort of like, when I do this, this will happen. When I do that, that will happen. When I do this, this will happen. So there. And it's like, what does that mean? You know? But when that happened with the uh, assembling of Exodia, it was very, very clear and so exciting uh, to be able to, to find a moment like that. Yeah, I, I really liked discovering the Egyptian story arc because um, it made it very clear that um, in the past, Kaiba was the Pharaoh's sparring partner, his right-hand man, right? Which you could do in ancient Egypt, right? But in modern day high school, how does the rival behave like a sparring partner? Because we're not gonna be fighting in the middle of class, right? So it's the, it's, the, uh, it's the sarcastic stuff, it's the digs that he uses in modern day. But once I learned what their history was, it, it sort of, it justified my choices approaching Kaiba the way I did because we didn't know that's what, that what, that the, that's where the storyline was going. We were not given the story, the shows <laughs> no. that far in advance. No. So when that story arc came up, I was like, oh. <laughs> that's what's yeah. going on. So I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Hello, what's your name? Uh, hi. Um, my name is Tyler, hey. and I was wondering if you guys were, I guess, dueling your in-anime counterparts, so you, uh, you Eric, um, Seto, and you, Dan, yeah. uh, Yugi, what would be your ace card? <laughs> if, I would, if I were dueling Yugi or Yami? Uh, let's go with Yami, and... So just... you were dueling, you're dueling yourself. Right, right, right. Um, I guess, I guess my ace card would uh, be my credit card because I need an Uber to get me the hell out of there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, uh, I think that I would probably use Pot of Greed because. What does it do? What does Pot of Greed do again? I don't know. Uh, how's that go? How's that go? You didn't think you didn't think we were that geeky, did you? <laughs> we know it. a couple memes. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Good question. Thank you so much. Great answers. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Jared. What's up? Uh, nothing much. Um, so I recently got the um the choice to revisit like the Sierra or Calco's arc, and um, I was watching the part where you know the Pharaoh lost his lost his mind to the seal um, and you know arguing back and forth with Yugi and it's like you know uh, it should have been me not him specifically because you voice two characters and like they had various like emotions between the two of them what was it like like in the booth to yes. record both sides of that like that heavy emotion and then like it's okay yeah yeah so um, actors love to engage in provocative material in moments that, that are meaty and meaningful, right? And very early on in the process, it was understood the best way to maintain the integrity of the, the sound of each character and the perspective of each character was to record one character all the way through and then go back to the beginning and record the other. So, um, uh, and, and, if, and how many of you are here are actors? How many are going, getting into acting? So you'll understand that you, you're a part of a story, you're part of telling the story from the character's perspective. Okay, sure. But it's also true that you can really only act one moment at a time. So your job is to fulfill, to commit, to give to those moments, and the construction of them tells the story. Thank you. Does so that make much. sense? Yeah, no, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, hi, I'm Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Um, hey. When you guys were, um, you know, recording Yu-Gi-Oh, were there any like, maybe like plot points or moments in the script that you didn't like 100% agree with or any any you <laughs> with? Because mine personally was Kaiba's like stubborn refusal to acknowledge magic, even when he had his soul captured like, I don't know, two or three times during the series. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's, what's funny about the, um, a lot of the shows is that we had a, a group of writers as well, right? It's not one person writing the entire series. It's about six different writers because of the production schedule. 
So there's also a lack of continuity. And they're, and they're adapting a previously written story. Yes. They're not creating the story. Right. So a choice that what Kaiba was saying or his lines in that might have been from one of the writers that wasn't as familiar with everything else Kaiba had been through. And then it's up to me sometimes as the director, not necessarily as the actor. Most actors don't have that, uh, that ability to say, no, 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 you, you, I can't say this. Uh -huh. But um, I definitely tried to keep the quality and change things so they were more in character for all of us. Like, there were times I'd be like, Yami wouldn't say it like that. And Kaiba, that's not a good Kaiba line. Uh, it's, it's, there's a better line that we can do for that. So that was more of what I, I had trouble accepting was, come on, you can do better than that. The storyline stuff, out of our hands. Out of our hands. The characterization, yes. a little bit of influence. Yeah. And it, I'm just going to back up what Eric was just touching on. The actor has no authority. No. Not at all. We're just, you, we show up, we do what we're told, and hopefully we, we will be asked back. Yes. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. Hello. 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 Hi. Hey. Kind of got a little bit of an off-the-wall uh, question here. This is an anime convention. You think you're going to ask us something we've never heard before? <laughs> We're going to voice a DC superhero <laughs> or villain. I know his answer already. That's easy. Ian, why? You go first. I would be Batman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd probably, I'd probably be the Christian Bale Batman with the slight <laughs> speech impediment that he has. I always thought that if you did have that little bit of the slushy ass, you would be able to tell the guy that was wearing the cowl was also Bruce Wayne, <laughs> since they both spoke the same way. You do have a nice sense. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I gotta go with Joker. Oh. Oh. So you guys have heard of like Hamlet, right? Yeah. yeah. So like every actor, that's the you know the, the gold standard. Every actor sort of proves himself against that character. Well, consider Joker in our modern times. We've had, we, we, we've had Mark Hamill, we've had Heath Ledger, we've had Joaquin Phoenix, and they all killed it, right? That character is a great character for an actor because you can go so many places with it. Even Cesar Romero. Even Cesar Romero, not to, not, Cesar not to, Romero. or Jack. Or Jack, right, he was okay, just kidding, he was great. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, and Cesar Romero pulled it off even with a uh, dyed mustache. So if you're going to play, yeah, he did. He, he told him he wouldn't shave it. Um, so if, you, if your choice is the Joker and my choice is Batman, I guess that's our third project. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm glad we worked that out. Oh, by the way, if you go to, I, I just got on Twitter. You can find me at Dan Green Voices. And I just put up a, a thing right before I left to come here with, with the pops. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so you should check that out, but maybe we should do Batman and Joker as Pops. I like it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hello, what's your name? Hello, my name is Carlos Miguel. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, I know everybody said it, but you guys were my childhood. I would not be the half of the man I am now if it wasn't for me starting Yu-Gi-Oh! When it started, I was seven years old. Wow. So. Thank you so much. My question yeah. is, uh, recently, like a couple of, you know, a while ago, we had Dark Side of Dimensions. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to know how you guys felt coming back to the voice booth, coming back with your characters, and how do you think they evolved from the show? It was the movie we always needed to make because we approached it in a cinematic way. There was air, the, uh, the, the dynamic of the music. It wasn't Saturday morning American cartoons with, with louder is better and brighter colors is better. This was, I felt like it was a Batman movie actually. I thought it was, it was, it was treated more like the original, even if it was a dub. So I, I really was very pleased we were finally making a movie that was, to me that's a great, I mean, if you're on the fence, if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, Start there, watch that movie, and you'll be like, okay, this is cool. I mean, I was in the theater when I played Exodia. You know, I mean, that was crazy. It was crazy, yeah, so I loved it. 
And for me, I really appreciated that they allowed Yugi to grow up just a little bit. We could reflect that vocally just a touch. I really appreciated that. Um, and what probably isn't intuitive to you all is that, so you, you know, coming back to a character you've done before is in, in many ways like visiting with an old friend, right? Um, but in reality, that was true because I was returning to the same studio we recorded the original series in. I was working with the same engineers, the director, and the yep. staff, and it's it's uh, you've, you it's, it feels like such a cliche, but it is a kind of family. Yeah. So that's that's great too. Yep, it was fun. Thank you so much. Thank also, you. Kaiba is way better than Batman and richer than Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I want, to, I want to thank you for bringing the energy here on a yeah, Sunday afternoon. Good. Thank good. you. Hello, what's your name? Hello, my name's Alyssa. Hi. So, like you said before, Yu-Gi-Oh! was a huge part of my childhood, and I've absolutely loved it ever since. So, my question for you guys is, of every series that came after Duel Monsters, GX, 5Ds, Zexel, Arc V, etc., who do you think had the best protagonist and who had the best rival? Oh wow! I'm actually this is very embarrassing, but I haven't followed the other series, and I don't and I don't do that out of a sense of, of resentment or I think they're lesser than. I, I simply just I, I haven't done that, so I, I don't have a, an informed response. I only know GX because I did direct the first two seasons of that, but I'm also Bastion on GX. Woo! Woo! Uh, um, the problem I had with GX as a show was uh, Jaden, who's a great. The, my the dear friend of mine is the voice actor for that. Um, the character was lazy. That's why I love him. He didn't want to do things. And I felt like that was the, that was the negative to the storyline. I, I felt like he needed a little bit of just some passion for something. It seemed like it was trying to be like a stoner cartoon. <laughs> You can blame the dub for that. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm also Ojama Black. Oh. oh my god. See, these are things that just come to me. I had no... I, I couldn't even <laughs> the concussion's wearing off. Good question. Hey, good question. Thank you. Thank you guys so much, Alan. Also, Chaz is the best rival. Just oh, saying. So you know. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very yeah, good. Yeah, Very Chaz good. is good. Hello. What's your name? Hello there, my name is Avery. Hey, Avery. Uh, thank you so much for everything over the years. Like you said, we're good on GX. I don't know if you remember Mr. Green, but I love Officer Trudge. Oh, yes, you mentioned it. Yeah. And uh, what I want to ask is, I thought it was so cool when the first, I think it was nine episodes, got re-released and were dubbed again, but with a closer script to the Japanese and with some vulgarities and stuff. What was it like going back and revisiting, not just revisiting the characters like a sequel, like the movies, but actually going through those Which movies? show is that? What, you mean when we did like season zero? No, we didn't do season zero. I, well, maybe you don't remember, but they actually did re go back and redub the first nine episodes. Right, I do remember that. It was like uncut yes. or something? Yeah. 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 yeah, so it, it, that, that, that's really interesting, and, and also this kind of relates to a thing I mentioned just a little bit ago about um, committing to a moment, right? And it's extremely important for actors to remain spontaneous and open. And so, you know, you just you just bring it. You you let go of anything, you know, before that moment. You just commit to what's on the page, what's what's trying to happen. And I understand a lot of people. This came up in a conversation this weekend. They they hate four kids because they ruined Yu-Gi-Oh and they changed all it. Four kids didn't make those choices. The four kid was they were made to make those choices because of broadcasting standards, right? So there was lots of editing and lots of things that were changed, not because four kids thought it was better that way, but they couldn't have aired otherwise. So right. yeah, that's true. Uh, awesome. I forgot question. about that. We got to, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very much. All right. Thank you. We just, got, we just got ten more minutes. Yep. All right. So we'll do it. We'll do our speed round just because we want to do that special thing you wanted to do. Oh yes, yes, we should. Yes, we're going to get you to perform for us. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. oh right. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Justin, and uh, the question I have for you is, um, in all the years that you were recording uh, Yu-Gi-Oh!, what would you say was the most outrageous thing you saw, either in the cards, or it could be a scene that you had to act, or <laughs> otherwise? What was the villain Sean Schemmel portrayed later on in the season? Uh, 
I right. forget what it is. Well, I, 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 pardon me uh, for, for not remembering, but there was a villain who had a really interestingly placed thing below his waist that projected out. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> Now, I've got the animes where that's like what you're supposed to see, but uh, not, I didn't think that was a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. What? That's... Zork. Well, he had a paradox on him, I'll tell you. Zork. <laughs> good question. Very good question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is Desire. Uh, as everyone else said, I have been with Yu-Gi-Oh for 15 years, actually. Wow. Um, I started when I was eight, and it actually started me getting into animation. I make my own animation. Nice. Well done. Well done. But I do have a question where it's like, you know how you said for the heart of the cards? Yeah. Which uh, card stayed in your heart? <laughs> oh, that's okay. So this this pertains to a couple of things. So um, as an actor, I this is true for a lot of actors. I, you know, I'm coming at it from the story perspective. I'm not I don't, I'm not a duelist. I don't really play the game. And so uh, the Dark Magician is probably the the card that that you know, is most relevant to the characters I portray. Uh, Eric and I were doing the podcast, The Heart of the Cards. The cards we're referring to are the tarot cards, right? Yes. And and I, I I created an image that's representative of each, each of us. And for myself, I chose the hermit. And uh, for Eric, I chose the magician. And if you aren't familiar with tarot, uh, I you can easily just go uh, search that. It'd be too long for me to get into here, but okay. you got it. You got it. You, know, you, you get it. You get it. Awesome. Yeah. Good yeah. question. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Well, yeah, what's your card? What's your Yu-Gi-Oh card? Oh. Not Pot of Greed. <laughs> I only have one card. It's a Blue Eyes White Dragon. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hi, my Hi. name is Carla. Hi. Um, I, I've been watching uh, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, and it's among the first animes I watched since I was a kid. Oh, well, yeah, uh, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, <laughs> I wasn't necessarily a smart kid, so... <laughs> Um, when it, when it came to the cars, I mean, did, did you guys find it very easy to understand what? We're no, doing? we don't no. understand. <laughs> no, when, I directed the show and I didn't understand the game yeah. plan. When, when I, we did so, we did a thing like a tutorial how to play Duel Monsters, and I remember when we did the recording, we we're like, oh, finally, we'll really understand. No, no, no. <laughs> like, I still no. don't get it. Okay. No, all right, that actually makes me feel a lot better because yeah, I've it's been, not it's just been you. It's not just, yeah, because I still don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good question. Which, importantly, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that it's not worth getting. I'm not, in no way. Yeah. Well, look, it's you. It is. <laughs> nice me, so, a lot like um, other people have said that they grew up with the show. I've been with the show for about 20 years now. I started watching when I was like eight. Um, so it has stayed with my life. Um, I wouldn't be here without the show. So, okay. Thank you guys. Um, so my question for you, um, for both you and um, Eric, are do you guys ever like voice your characters in real life situations just because you can? Yeah, so one of the things that I would do with my, I have two daughters and, and when they were a little younger um, and we'd go out to the restaurant or something like that, I would talk in some crazy wacky voices. Um, and have to maintain it through the whole meal because I didn't want to like fool the, the server and make them feel you know like you know embarrassed that that's not how I really speak. Um, at the time, um, yeah, that uh, drove the, my now ex-wife crazy, which could be why she's my ex-wife. <laughs> I used to when the show was first coming out, I would joke around with my wife about how what if I did do that, you know, just to describe ordinary things like. All right, I'm going to go to the grocery store and buy some milk. Yes! That's great. You think we should do the laundry today or tomorrow? Yes! So it's tempting. But also, I want to address something. We had a wonderful interaction the other day. And some people come to us and say things like, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for this show. It got me through a hard time. Uh, that goes all the way to suicidal ideation, to just having patches of depression and, and that sort of a thing. And very often, very heartfeltly, someone will say, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have gotten through that. And that's a tremendous thing to receive, but I always make the point of reflecting back to them. You found something in the show. You got yourself through that. Hi. 
Yeah. Peace out. I have a question. <laughs> okay, right. So I watch Pokemon, I watch Yu-Gi-Oh, I watch everything with four kids. <laughs> okay, you're clear. You're allowed. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> what if uh, What if Yu-Gi-Oh was TV fourteen? Hey now. <laughs> I mean, you know, who knows? You don't think so? I'd love no. to hear you. No. Yes. Right. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah. My phone. It's kind of fun to think about. Keep quiet. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. You got it. Oh. Hi, my name is China, and I have like another off the wall question. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> so what would you? I, I asked this to like every actor I can before I freak out, but um, what would you do for a Klondike bar? You know, <laughs> uh, you know what? Extend that to Kaiba and Yami. What would they also do for a Klondike bar? Uh, I would tear a blue eyes white dragon in half. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's the that's the sacrifice I would make. Uh, yeah, I think Yugi might sacrifice Nita Karibo. I don't know. Oh! And I, I think Yami would would probably something say something like, "What is a Klondike boy?" <laughs> Thank you for the question. Thank you. All right, three more questions. Yep. Three more questions. Here we go. Uh, hello, my name is Kevin. Uh, sorry in advance, this is also a kind of a dumb question. Um, such thing. Oh. So, the video, and this is less Yu-Gi-Oh, more for kids, but obviously I love Yu-Gi-Oh growing up. Um, but the video of the poor kid star singing the national anthem lives rent free in my head. <laughs> wow. I know you were in that den, you were playing Knuckles at the time, he's in the video. I don't know if Eric was in it, but do either of you remember anything regarding the production of that? I was drinking then. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Uh, other than we, that, we recorded it, and I felt it was a little strange. Not, not really. Yeah. Yes, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that you had to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't our idea. Yeah. Good question. Thank you so much. Hello. <laughs> I'm Cindy. Um, my question is, what kind of Pokemon would Yuki Yami or Sunfire have? Oh, uh, Squirtle. I would use Squirtle. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I think that the Pharaoh would probably have Entei. Yeah. And, and then they would be like, they sound exactly alike. What is that about? And, and I think, um, I think Yugi would have Trickle. Oh. Thank you. Check with self promotion. I think. <laughs> All right, no pressure. But last question. Last question. So I'm Jeremy. That's hey, Jeremy. Again. Um, so I've watched the show for years. Uh, the fact that y'all let the fate of the world be decided on a card game, how did y'all feel about that? <laughs> they were like, who the hell is writing this show? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the security guards had finger guns, but y'all let this, the Man, fate I, of the world. I built an elevator to get to space. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, a lot of rational thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good, question. Good question. Thanks, man. As, as we mentioned before, we're doing this podcast called The Heart of the Cards. That's a phrase you might be familiar with. And um, so what I'd like to ask you to do is to just get up on your feet, and I'm going to give you a little voice direction, all right? And uh, we're going to ask you to say The Heart of the Cards, okay? But we don't want you to just say it. We want you to be enthusiastic. We want you to mean it. Okay. Next time with Alan, as Eric loves to say. Let me get a little further so I can get a better angle on it. All right. So, Eric is going to count you down. He's going to say one, two, three, then he's going to point at you. That's when you say the heart of the cards, and we're going to do two takes. You got it? Guys, ready? All right. Woo! Okay. One, two, three. The heart of the cards! Ready for take two? One. <laughs> Two, three. The heart of the cards! Oh, that was awesome! Awesome! Thank you guys! Before you go anywhere, we're gonna take a, sel a stage selfie, so if you guys come up here near the stage, near- Go to the stage, go to uh, the stage! Uh, oh, uh, near the stage, get up here, pretend there's nothing going on in the world, get close.